Broadcasting live from the east side of sunny Maui, Hawaii. It's the last show on earth with Nate Chappell. Tonight, we get Gabby with Gabby from Hana Farms and Sandy with Nate from this show. And now, the man who put the Kaliki in Mali Kaliki Maka, the last host on earth, Nate Chappell. Johnny? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the life's a beachiest show on internet television, the last show on earth. Now, I know it seems kind of weird that we're actually producing an episode while we're on vacation, but how else are we going to write it off? Seriously, how else? I'm not very knowledgeable about tax code. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. I'm on vacation. Let's talk tax code. Seems like the perfect time to really dig into it. Do I itemize my deductions? Take the standard deductions? Ah, so relaxing. If I own a sole proprietor LLC, do I need to fill out a form 1040 or 1040A? And breathe out. We are, as Randy said, broadcasting from sunny Hana on the island of Maui. It's my first time in Maui, and I have to say, Wowie. Really, I have to. It's a compulsion. Maui Wowie. It rhymes. So we are pre-taping this episode because we're on island time, baby. People talk about island time all the time, but it turns out it's just four hours earlier than Madison time. It's a pretty easy calculation, actually. And it was a pretty long flight over here. Let's talk about airplane food. You guys know what I'm talking about, huh? Yeah, really something, these airplane meals. It's like, what is this? A Southwest veggie wrap with chipotle mayonnaise and some gourmet kettle chips and chocolate clusters? Oh, so good, you guys. Really. I've been thinking about just eating all my meals on airplanes from now on. I mean, at least lunch and dinner. Something about eggs in flight seems unnatural. But bring on those wraps, baby. And in what I can only classify as the absolute pinnacle of aviation technology, airplanes now have Tetris. Yeah, I was super anxious about a seven hour flight, but time went by so fast, it was like a couple thousand lines cleared and all of a sudden, I'm in Hawaii. I didn't want to leave, I was going for a high score and munching on some chocolate clusters. But I did eventually get off the plane. I took my blanket, I'll tell you that. We're having a really good time so far. I love the ocean. So delicious, salty. Makes our lakes in Madison seem really bland. I mean, except for Lake Cumin, I guess. And frankly, that's a bit much. All the runoff from the Cumin farms. Great for a soup, though. Man, so fun. Uh, not soup, the ocean. Don't get me wrong, soup's a lot of fun, too. I get it. But the ocean, with all the waves and everything, it's like a giant, majestic wave pool. You guys ever think about that? Here's a science fact for you. The world is 70% wave pool, and 5% slip and slides, or no. No, that sounds right, yeah, that's right. Finally tried poi for the first time. That's been on my list of things to do list before I die. I don't wanna buzz market the, the movie bucket list, but it is on my list of things to do list before I die. So it's poi. It's basically pureed taro root. And I gotta tell you, it really tastes like it. Poi, great for word games, bad for eating. I don't wanna buzz market Scrabble either, or Boggle. Actually, you know what, screw it, play Boggle, it's really fun. So this might surprise you. Um, I actually have a hard time relaxing. Just a general feeling of unease. Those of you who know me would probably never say I was high strong, but only because you'd be afraid I'd freak out on you. No, I probably don't hide it well at all. I mean, sure, the sunglasses help. Cool, dude. But unfortunately, I sort of have a case of resting oh no face. I always look like I just remembered something terrible or spotted something unsettling right behind you. Or that we're all eventually going to die. Bing, 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 bing. That's it. That's what it was. That's what I remembered. And that's what's standing right behind you. A constant creeping death. And breathe out. <sighs> namaste. But don't you be a namaste boy, because here's Carl Lewis with your morning affirm nation. I'm security guard Carl Lewis with today's morning affirm nation. Thank <laughs> you. 
Remember, a man is not an island. Yeah, but a man is on an island. You're that man. This is that island. I'm Nate Chapel, and this is my week. On Tuesday, I got up early to catch the sunrise, and it was underwhelming. Kinda just wish I would've slept in. On Monday, I went body surfing. That's the Hawaiian word for eating sand. I wouldn't say I hung 10, but I would say I ate 10,000 grains of sand. On Thursday, we took a trip to the banana farm, if you know what I mean. I mean, we went to a banana farm, a plantation, if you will. Ah, uh, look at those cute little baby bananas and that. Oh my god! Is that your asexual reproductive organ or are you just happy to see me? That's my week in review. I'm Nate Chapel saying my vacation was better than your vacation. stuff inside my ear moving. Yeah, there's really nothing visible. False alarm, everybody. There's nothing in my ear. There's nothing in his ear. Let's vote. Woo, you're up. Abby, I'll promise you right here, right now, that I will stay loyal. Hey, I'm Nate Chapel, and welcome to How to Build a Sand Castle with Nate Chapel. What is sand castles? Well, hold on, let me look it up. Okay, well sand is like tiny little rocks, which is why it's perfect for building castles which are made out of big rocks. So it's like a little castle made with little rocks. Now, let's talk history, okay? The first sand castle was built by a tiny primitive man who was actually just trying to build a house out of sand. But then, of course, the tide rose and it washed out the castle. So then he built it, the next one out of the rocks. And the real castle was born. Now, there are several techniques building sand castles. One of them is called the bucket. Well, guess what, folks? I don't have a bucket. Another one is called freestyle. Me, I'm a big fan of Flank Lloyd Wright. So what I'm gonna do is build my sand castle in the same spirit of Taliesin. Kind of like a Taliesin sand. Now what's important is that you have a good, solid foundation. So what you're gonna do is use the ground. But you wanna look closely to see where it's kind of wet so you get good packing sand, but not too wet so the water's gonna come and wash it away. 
Whoa, that was a big kahuna. Put all this sand in a big pile. Okay, now this is just the first step. It's just a pile of sand. If you think about it like the sand is like the rocks, well, what about the windows, you ask? Well, guess what? Sand is basically just glass, too. And the eyes are the window to the soul. I'm just gonna go wash my hands quick. Another style that is maybe a little less technical is the drip method. Now, that's an ugly sand cap. This final method of sand castling is what I like to call compositing. It's where you composite an image of the sand castle you want onto the video that you want the sand castle in. Like this, or this, or this, or this, or this. So as you can see, there are many styles of sand castling to be made. I'm only showing you the most one that I'm able to do. What I always wonder is where are you gonna put your king seat? Because as I've heard, those who live in sand houses shouldn't stow thrones. <laughs> thought I had my sunglasses. So that's how to build a sand castle. I'm Nate Chapel. We're here at Hannah Farms, Lone Grocoli, Mobile Market, and it's time to see what's inside. So I'm here at Hannah Farms. Uh, are you Hannah? <laughs> no, I'm not. No. Uh, am I saying that right? <laughs> no, Hannah? it's Hannah. Oh, Hannah, like the town. Yeah. Hannah. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I do like chips. Now they actually have Wi-Fi here, which is why they built where they did, because there's a naturally occurring Wi-Fi spring, or so I've made up. And so that is the best place to get a good signal. Let's check our Facebooks. <laughs> I can hear the inside of a coconut. Uh, so you're not Hannah, what, what's your name? Gabby. Gabby, okay. Well that makes sense, you've just been talking nonstop since we got here. Like honeybee. 
What? <laughs> you take the lime and the coconut and you mash them all up. Is that how it goes? What's your insurance policy like on that cat? Because he just clawed me because I was touching his tummy. Yeah, well, you uh, might have deserved it. I might have deserved it. I was looking for a price tag. Mm -hmm. These are what doctors call apple bananas, which is very convenient for learning the alphabet because it covers two letters. The first two, I think, A and B. a label anywhere on these. Hanna Farm. Hanna Farms is known especially for its homemade banana bread. So maybe consider picking up a loaf and making a nice tuna salad sandwich on it. Mm -hmm. If you need any straws, this is the place to come. Super food drink mix? Drink or food? I'm not buying it. Actually, I think I'm gonna buy it. And in the back of Hana Farms is a great place to catch a little R&R. &R. That's rest and room. Well, I would call last week's special gruel and unusual fish and chips. So today's game is Lava Block. That's the game where we block this volcano with one of these. But we gotta fill the volcano, and the first one that goes above the rim wins. Ready to play, Viv? Ready. This is my camera operator, uh, life partner, wife partner, and vacation pal, Viv Chapel. was episode vacation. A big thanks to uh, Hannah and Gabby for being on tonight. Thanks to Hana Farms. Check them out there at uh, On the Road. And to Hana. Um, big thanks as always to the uh, most Aloha crew on earth. Viv Chapel and Johnny Fisher. Finn Hammond and Tyler Ensard made the music for tonight's show. Check out uh, Tyler on Instagram, he's Ty Slow Down, and check out Finn on my back. For more episodes of this show, go to thelastshowonearth.org or the newly redesigned wolfout.tv. Thanks a lot for watching us tonight, creeps, and remember, we're watching you too. And as Elvis always said in Blue Hawaii, huh, why is everything so blue? Am I having a stroke or something? Bye.
I never thought I'd get sick of kiwi. I used to think I loved it, but turns out I just loved it mixed with strawberry and snapple. Why can't one of these stupid trees grow snapple, huh? Ah, that'd be so good. Ah, and they had those little messages on the underside of the cap. Do you remember that? I always thought they were kind of stupid, but it sounds nice now to have something to read. Kind of makes me wish we wouldn't have burned all those books on that first night. But come on, Owen Meanie? That sounds like a jerk. You know, it just occurred to me. We had like an actual desert island situation, you know, Mr. Pineapple? Like, you know, if you were stranded on a desert island, what three books would you bring? And except we had 30. And we didn't get to pick them. You know, it's like one of those questions. What do you, what do you call it? It's like a hypo, hydro, Hypodermic. Damn it, why did I burn that dictionary? You know, looking back, I think I just would have not gone on that cruise. Hypothetically speaking. Oh, well, that's it, hypothetical. I know I've said this a thousand times, Mr. Pineapple, but why couldn't it have been a dessert island? You know, hard candy coconuts, gummy rocks, powdered sugar beaches as far as the eye could see. But if it's a dessert island, I don't need any books. Just give me some biscotti for dipping in the chocolate falls. Am I right? God, 10 years. I wonder what's going on back home. I wonder how lost it ends. I was really looking forward to that. Man, I wish we had a smoke monster. You know what, you wanna know something funny? My favorite color is maroon. And now I'm maroon. Isn't that weird? I don't know, I probably already told you that. Remember like two years ago when I saw that boat? I got all excited and I shot our last flare directly into the ocean. Man, I still kind of beat myself up over that one, Mr. Pineapple. There's nothing else to do out here on this dumb island. Man can only make so many sand castles. Okay, that's not true. Sand castles are still pretty cool, but that's it. I think I'm gonna start counting the sand. That's how bored I am. I'm not kidding this time, Mr. Pineapple. I'm gonna do it. Maybe we'll luck out and that dumb volcano on the other side of the stupid sand trap will finally blow and end this tropical nightmare. I'm sorry, Mr. Pineapple. I don't, I don't know what my problem is. I guess I just woke up on the wrong side of the rotten driftwood that I've covered with woven palm leaves this morning. Maybe the chafing is finally getting to me. Maybe it's just beard. So itchy. Or, you know, maybe it's the prospect of being stranded on this desert island that has a limited and diminishing supply of fruit without any books or records or hope for escape or rescue. Maybe that's it. Or maybe it's Monday, who knows? One thing I do know is that I'm really glad you're here with me, Mr. Pineapple. I'm glad you're here too. Mind if I eat that pineapple? Oh, not at all. That's why I call you Mr. Pineapple. So ends another broadcast day here at Wolf Out Television, and so ends another vacation here at Wolf Out Television. As we say at the end of every vacation, good night and good nachos. Now get back to work.